I need a penguin. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and <laughs> welcome to a uh, rocky beginning to tonight's <laughs> session. I am Christine, aka Crafty Psych, on the uh, Twitterverse. Before we jump into this game tonight, I would like to quickly thank our sponsors. Thank you, Roll20, Tabletop Loot, So Nerdware, and Devin Rue for sponsoring and supporting our channel. Can I get someone to type in a sponsors for me, please? Thank you. Uh, we also have a Patreon, which uh, helps to support the bulk of our operations here. Uh, and subs and bits to our Twitch channel uh, can help give you some awesome emotes that we have and give us the players some extra benefits. So check out the Patreon info. Someone can send that. And don't forget to join our amazing Discord. Uh, you can find all of us there and we are a very welcoming community and Come check us out. So we're going to go around and the players will introduce themselves, where you can find them online, and their characters, starting with Don. What's up, everybody? I am Don. Some of you know me as Jago. Now Don Jago. Anyway, point is, um, I am here today playing Vigo Milan, who is a paladin barbarian, a tiefling. Um, former pirate who has joined up with this adventuring party. Um, normally, you can just catch me on the Welcome to the Party Discord. Come on down. It's a super great community. Very, very welcoming. Very, very helpful in pretty much every manner you can think of. Um, aside from that, no Twitter. And my one game for the season already ended. So if you want to go back through the archives and check out the records for Masks, the Break Phase Club, just ended on Friday. It was a really, really great session. So... Persephone. Hi, uh, I'm Persephone, and I'm going to be playing uh, Falma Torun, who is a human forge cleric. Uh, I've not actually played a cleric before, so this is going to be interesting. Uh, you can find me on on the Twitters, uh, at Persephone Hime, and uh, I'm also in the Welcome to the Party Discord. Also, come on down and do stuff and play games. Yeah. Phoenix. Hello there, everybody. For those of you who uh, are coming here from suggestion from the Agni campaign, hello. Welcome to see me here as a player for once. Perpetual DM is real. Uh, I am going to be playing uh, Willow, a wood elf druid, Circle of the Shepherd. And uh, you can find me in the Twitter sphere at Phoenix24Fem or at Philosophem for my Patreon, where I do writing and other uh, pieces of work done also through the Art for Ourselves QT Pock online publication as well. I'm excited to be here and excited to have a game run by Christine. Uh, Kiska. Hello, I am Lily and I am playing Kiska, who is a silver dragonborn uh, sorcerer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she's on the run uh and as trying to be as inconspicuous as this seven and a half foot dragonborn can be we'll see how that works out uh i'm a, at elise on life on twitter i'm lescribe on twitch and discord um and i am around on uh welcome party streams uh please check out uh, Adventures in Agni, which is the campaign that I was just in. We wrapped on Saturday, uh, but you can see all of the past ones on um, YouTube. Uh, and that was an all POC D&D uh, &D 5E campaign. That was fantastic. Uh, and I also will show up occasionally on side quests and probably um, on Welcome Parties uh, 3V on Sundays, which has just started back, which is also um, all POC one shots. 
And finally, Meg. Oh God, here we go. Okay, hi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am Meg or Megan, whatever. Uh, you can find me wandering through the Discord, rambling about random things, nudes and lewds, you know my life. Um, <laughs> I will be playing Yilda Grounder. She is a hill dwarf and a, oh crap, ranger. There you go. Ranger, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Hunter, ranger. That thing. Um, she hunts okay. things. She's, she's nerdy and sturdy and that's my life. Um, so yes, you can find me wandering through the Discord and also on our stream game, Blood, Blood, Blood and Shackles, Bone and Shackles. Something with shackles. Blood, Blood and, and shackles. shackles. There we go. On <laughs> Friday. And I'm an awkward mess. So, bye. <laughs> You're, we're five minutes in and we're already one player down. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're doing DMs proud, Christine. You didn't have to do anything. <laughs> so, welcome to the uh, awkward mess uh, party. <laughs> um, we are going to dive right into this game if y'all are ready. Y'all yeah. ready for this? Da, 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 da. Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> but that's how it should be. You should not be ready. Alright, good. So y'all are at camp in the Myrna Mist Woods uh, at the town to the southwest. You had heard rumors of uh, some very, very old and ancient ruins uh, where people have wandered near or gone to investigate but have never returned. There wasn't any job posting or uh, anything like that, but you're like, why not go check it out? So you asked around, really didn't get much information because of how old the ruins are. There really isn't much history uh, left to that town of the area. Just, it's creepy. Um, so y'all just shrugged your shoulders and was like, we'll, we'll still go check it out, see if we can figure something out. Uh, and got your horses and journeyed to here where you're at right now. It took a couple days to get there. Yeah, had no problems on the road. Um, so you're waking up to the new day. You camped out right outside the uh, entrance. So it is the morning of. I open it all to y'all to role play and give me a heads up when you actually head into the dungeon. I can take the lead on this. Um, I imagine Willa's probably one of the uh, first people up. I think she tends to be an early riser, mainly because um, she likes interacting with a lot of the little creatures that are around. Probably the party has sometimes, I'd like to imagine occasionally the some folks treated with either, yay, it's our alarm clock, or oh, it's our alarm clock, as you just hear her kind of losing track of how loud her voice is when she's just like looking for little squirrels and little things all around the area. Like, hello there. How are you doing? Is everything going all right? Do you need berries? Do you need anything? And she's has kind of like a white shock of hair that's a little off putting for maybe a wood elf, but her skin and it contrasts very heavily with sort of a deep reddish brown skin where she's wearing a combination of sort of a summer dress and a trench coat in some ways, and that it's it looks like it's impractical to all degrees but like she'll randomly like stick her hand like down her shirt and then or like underneath her armpits and there's like if you look closely there's like 12 compartments of nuts and berries and snacks that she just, like, randomly chucks snack like, compartments like, yes it's a, snack, <laughs> it's a snack compartment dress it's a dress with pockets i want a snack compartment dress i thought about this long and hard with my partner who does like nature uh base education and such environmental education so yeah she's just wandering around and she's probably started muttering to herself out loud should i go be a wolf for a bit see if i can find someone or will that wake up everyone she, she hasn't realized she's talking louder and louder so she's 
in her head she's being considerate, but she's probably waking somebody up at this point. Yeah, and I think I think that somebody is probably Falma just hearing this groan and like, uh Willa, could you be a little more quiet? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I was looking for uh, just an animal or two to talk with. They've been rather, they've been a rather bit sparse around here, and um, I was just hoping for, you know, just to give them something. I, the berries that I made yesterday are about to go terrible. Hmm. Well, all, all right, you know, just you know, be mindful of folks are still waking up and. I mean, you know, I, I you know I'd imagine I know considerably less about animals than you do, but don't like they spook at loud noises. I suppose so. Yeah. She gets like a little crestfallen. She's like the thought of oh no, less animals around her makes her really sad. She's like, oh no. I'll try and be a bit more quiet, but I suppose folks should be getting up soon anyway. It's the start of the day. Yeah, but you know, let them let them get up in their own time. Fair enough. I'll I'll be looking to see what I can make and make mm -hmm. for folks. You know, look around for some other things. Wander around the camp, just looking for other berries and stuff to help add to whatever supplies we have. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I am just going to kind of take this time to just kind of look at the sunrise and pray to my goddess uh, and uh, prepare my spells and just holding my uh, my little uh, anvil pendant, I guess. What's everyone else doing? It's still the wee hours in the morning as y'all start slowly waking up. I, I think at that point, like, as Persephone's um, character is like praying, like as she's praying, she's just, Yilda just rolls over and is like, You made her emotional this early. Okay, listen, she's always emotional, and also I am in the middle of something, thank you very much. Yeah, and I was in the middle of sleeping, but okay. And she just rolls back over. <laughs> Okay, Diviner. <laughs> uh, Kiska wasn't even, like, at the campsite. Like, she stalks <laughs> in now, like, from behind, like, where the horses were. Like, she was, you know, on watch or whatever. Even if even if we hadn't, like, de decided to have a watch, she She's just appointed watch. herself. Yeah, she was just like, yeah, I'm gonna stay up um and she like she looks around and she makes note of where everybody is and um sits down uh next to like uh if there's like a tree or something takes out like a notebook and like writes down certain things and if you could see this notebook it would basically look like a bunch of like letters and numbers in draconic Cool. And last but not least, um, Vigo does not slowly wake up, but suddenly sits up, bolt upright, like blade in his hand, and like chucks it at the nearest tree that he can find. But it's just the scabbard at that point, and and is kind of like thrashing for a moment, uh, looking around wild eyed, and then finally like rubbing his face vigorously and pushing his hair back over his horns and going. Uh, just another damned nightmare. <sighs> Poor baby. We You're good a... there, Vigo. I am now. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, don't be swinging that sword at any of us. Well, not that one, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it, that one goes over Willow's head, and she. <laughs> <laughs> She walks over to Vigo. She walks over to Vigo. Do you need me? Do you need me to summon something to keep you company and be, bring you a little comfort, or do you, would you prefer something smaller and delightful? Uh, Vigo looks very like confused at that and and waves it off, going, 
No, the only thing that will bring me comfort is once we finally make it to the dungeon. Finish this. Travel is, uh, doesn't sit well on me. It requires too much patience. The sky doesn't move as much as it should. She, like, moves her hands around. She holds this little, uh, sphere of sort of crystallized kind of amber. That's her, that's her druid focus. And she, out of the palms of her hand, she makes, like, a little rustle of leaves. And druid crafts just this little slight smell of, uh, sort of the sea air just near you. Just to see if that's more comforting. Um... Yeah, breathing that in, Vigo actually, like, like, his pupils, like, undilate and slowly go back down to normal. Um, he was, like, like full excited cat for a moment. And then uh, he, he breathes in very, very deep with that, and uh, he places a hand on Willow's shoulder and thanks. And uh, says, that, that does indeed remind me of strangely better and worse times, but it's comforting all the same. It's, it's in the nature, well, of nature and such to provide such things. Contrasting, they're good and bad. Indeed, it is. Now I must too begin my morning preparations. <laughs> and Vigo will go to prepare his spells. <laughs> so, while y'all are doing your morning preparations, you've woken up, you've had your wonderful your wonderful banter, which probably happens like every morning to some degree. Um, the sounds that you hear in the that's your normal forest sounds, birds, things rustling in the wood, in, in the uh, trees, like squirrels and everything. Um, some of the bird sounds sound really close, um, but it seems like everything is normal at, uh, around here. Um, on the way here, you didn't come across like any lost adventures or anything to show signs that people have been here recently just wanted to give y'all a heads up on that but things seem normal right now as y'all prepare roll initiative roll <laughs> <laughs> initiative <laughs> done <laughs> you have seems three normal slowly approaching you <laughs> um, um we'll just go over to Kiska and she'll she'll try not to interrupt. She'll wait for a moment where like maybe Kiska's pausing from the writing. Yeah. Um, Kiska. Yes. Would you would you like anything? And she's probably just like she it takes her a second like she holds out her hands and then you see she doesn't have anything and she realizes it and then she starts like trying to figure out which pocket she left the thing to give Kiska in. <laughs> And she's like, um, I think you said these were your favorite. Um, she just went looking around for just a couple bits of berries she thinks Kiska might like. Uh, Thanks so for the raid, uh, Dice Priori. Thank y'all. Oh. oh. Hello. Danke. Welcome to the party. Respectfully, thank you very much. Mm. Um, yeah, Kiska accepts the berries, like, with a nod. Um, but like is just like holding them in her hand for the moment um because uh, like kiska takes like trying to be inconspicuous really seriously so she has uh, like a, a a head covering on and then also like a cloth like um wrapped around the bottom part of her face so like you can really only see her eyes um and like, the only reason why you would even know she's not human is perhaps her size, um, but also because she has, like, dragon feet talons, not, like, human feet. Uh, but, yeah, so she's just, like, holding the berries there, like, okay, thanks. A little backs away, but, like, she moves her hands, like, very just gently and just, like, does this little, like, up like cupping like up motion and she I cast mold earth and I just use just I make like a tiny little like table of dirt just rise up so it's easier so you don't have to like look for a log or anything to ride on just in case and she just like writes a little note like through the mold earth it's just like in case 
and then it just like backs away. She doesn't say anything else. She just backs away and just like she figures once Kiska wants her space, she's just gonna let her have it. But she wants to help, but not be like, you must pay attention to me, help. <laughs> Y'all are adorable. <laughs> Yilda finally wakes up and is just like, all right, let's go. So she proceeds to get all her stuff rounded up and goes to her horse. And <clears throat> Yilda will do much the same. Yeah, so Jessica you... will be ready also. She already has her pack on her back. So you're camped right outside of the dungeon, so you won't be needing the horses anymore. But if oh. you want to make sure that they're they're secure for your journey inside, go for it. Yes. Yes. That's yes. Smart. smart things. Yeah. Do the do the smart things. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh. You're whinnying and neighing coming from Willow's uh, voice all of a sudden, but she it in in horse because she's doing speech of the woods. She's just saying, we promise we'll be back soon. Please, if you see anything that scares you, take care of yourselves, but please try and come back. I promise we're not abandoning you. <laughs> um, Vigo watches this, but places more faith in knots over word talking to the horses. So as he was once a sailor, um, he goes ahead and, and makes the best ties that he can to like nearby trees to keep the horses secure. Yes, let's okay. So everybody's oh. horse is secure. Are we good? Are y'all yeah. ready? So ready. as as you guys are uh, checking in with the horses, doing all of that, uh, you all pick up some more rustling uh, from the trees and out. Comes a four foot tall owl walking into your camp. And just so you guys can see the picture, I will show it to you. Hold on one moment. Can y'all see? Uh, I believe so. Love them already. I will protect them with my life. <laughs> <laughs> so you see before you this four foot tall uh, owl in, uh, let's see, he is in half plate armor wielding a short sword and a shield. Um, bright golden eyes and he comes walking in as y'all are about ready to head right to the doorway um Woo -hoo, wait 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 don't go in yet who are you i <laughs> am i am a not weapon. not even ironically she's like <laughs> who are you <laughs> I'm sorry, I just scratched my desk so hard at that. <laughs> All of the Alpines are just going to be here for the rest of the night. Let's go. Um, <laughs> anyway, I am Riffin the Ash Knight, and I warn you to not enter. It is not safe. I've given warnings to many, and every time they still enter, I think only one or two parties heeded my warning and went on their way to not investigate these ruins, to not try and find any treasure within, but it is really not safe. Beings of fire have been starting to... Uh, rise and wander parts uh 
and they've been going past my home and going outside of it more often than not, which is why I am here since this borders my home. I'd rather be a watcher and protect people by giving warnings because we really can't spare the people to deal with this ourselves. I would say the people to spare are right here in front of you then. That sounds like we are the people to go in since everyone else seems to be afraid. Yeah. Plus, Vigo's pretty good with fire. I'm pretty good with fire. You know, if people are hurting, uh, you know, definitely taking care of what's hurting them is one way to solve the issue. If you... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. No worries, dear. At the very least, if you have... It's my duty to help those such as yourself. Also, um, if, if I may say so, you're very adorable, and it's very hard for me to contain myself saying that. I don't want to disrespect you, but also you're very cute, and I love you already. Yilda just steps in and pats her... pats Willow on the back, and is like, Calm down, child. And she proceeds to talk to, to Riffin and is like, if this is such a bad place, why do you live here? I live here for the, well, for the protection of those around and also as a lookout for my people. Our town is a few days journey from here so I am to look out for anything that would come harm us so if I can try and dissuade adventurers from going in there and dying painful deaths I I gotta try it is a noble pain. cause hmm. but if you are 100% determined who go in there? I will not stop you. Well, great. Let's go, guys. However, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his chest puffs up a bit. If you can see, like, like the the, the, the half light chest there, you just kind of move a bit and you just. That's adorable. <laughs> if you need help. Give a holler. Give a call. And I will and... wait at the entrance. Help make sure nothing else decides to follow you in. Nothing tries to escape out. But here if you need me. What 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 shall we shall we say to get your attention? The ruins Echo. So whenever adventurers go in and I do the same thing, it's it's hard to listen sometimes. Um, but when they've called for help, whether <laughs> Riffin come help, give a bird call if you know him. We'll figure something out. <laughs> <laughs> figure something out, but. If I hear too many screams, I'm going to come running. Okay. If we cannot succeed upon the strength of ourselves, then we don't deserve to succeed at all, then. You shall not need to assist us. Don't worry. She just smacks Vigo and is like, speak for yourself. We'll take the help we can get. Thank you very much. I always speak for myself. Clearly. <laughs> this, whole, this whole party is just we deal with Vigo and his ego. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Vigo the ego. <laughs> I'm sorry. Design, after all, designed <laughs> that way for a reason. I was waiting for it to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 like 
start heading into the dungeon, but is still kind of occasionally like looking with like a look of like fawning back at Riffen. It's just like so cute, and I want to talk with you more, but I have to go do this thing, please. And as you enter, he stands there, shield and sword ready in case he's needed. And with that, who enters first? I nominate Vigo. Um, Vigo. He's got like gestures like you first to Vigo. <laughs> Huh. Yeah, like he will have to be stopped <laughs> from being the first one. <laughs> uh, Falna will be uh, right behind him, though, after I cast light on my shield. Yep. I uh, draw my silvered moon touched greatsword and have that in front of me. <laughs> All right. Well, let me, let me at least get your token on the field since you're entering first and then we will switch over to the map does can anyone see it i can see it yeah <laughs> we're at the very bottom oh okay so not with those two thingies okay <laughs> no, no, scroll to the bottom. Mm -hmm. You'll see. Okay. All right, it seems we're also everyone on Twitch is now seeing. So, yes. And so with, all right, y'all have entered in. What you see is old stone, um, well-worn and definitely crumbling in areas, but still standing, uh, and it's surprising since from what y'all know, the history is lost, so no one knows exactly how old this place is. But for the most part, it's still standing with some rubble. You see a what? hallway? Like what? No, I was just going to ask if we see anything other than just the ruins. So you've you've entered into the entrance. That's this area. So you have walked in. Um, it's more darkness down. You can kind of see uh, that exiting this room is a hallway, um, and you can faintly see what looks like. A uh, set of stairs that just kind of uh, lead down in. Because from what you saw when you uh, approached before entering in, it seems the entrance is sitting f like firmly on the ground, but then the rest of the dungeon is, the rest of the ruins are kind of in the ground. Um, parts you can't see are, also, are, are completely underground. But for mo most of you, what you can see, only the entrance is firmly sitting on top of the ground. The rest is kind of in the ground. So, welcome to the Ferna Ruins. Okay. What are y'all um... doing? Vigo is slowly but cautiously striding forward. Roll perception. <laughs> this is the moment where I'm like, I wasn't rolling perception, but I'm going to take that. <laughs> <laughs> 16. 
So it's the same continuation of the 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 worn stone, the rubble. You don't really see uh, any signs of traps or anything, but you also really don't see any signs of life. And you don't see any recent dust disturbances. Um, so there's no footprints or anything. Uh, as you remember from town, no one's been there, at least that has come through that town, has been there in a while. Um, okay. I'm laughing at all the pun, the owl puns I'm seeing on Twitch right now. Yes. <laughs> and I love them. Bless y'all. Um, but yeah, no signs of life. It seems safe. Feel free to continue moving in. Then I do that, where Vigo will tell the rest of the party that um, it doesn't look like this place has been disturbed in some time. We should be good for now. All right. Willow will uh, reach into one of her pockets, pull out seed, chucks it over her shoulder. Wrong one. Wrong one. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, makes a little connection of just looks like a vial of dew and moss and connected to her focus. She's going to cast Produce Flame and then just help add some extra light and just keep it ahead and probably actually going to stick up close with uh, Vigo because I think she's relatively comfortable in this kind of dark, dank, untouched place because a lot of the forests she grew up in tend to be kind of similar. So she's going to wander ahead with Vigo. Just try and see what she can see ahead. Okay. So as you continue forward, and y'all can feel free to move your tokens, because you should have access to them to move. Let me know if you don't. Um, as you reach the end of the hallway, uh, Vigo, you come to an intersection. Do you step fully into the hallway or do you kind of like look around the corner to your right and left to see what you see? So I, yes, I pause at the intersection to the hallway because no. Um, <laughs> because no. And I actually have a steel mirror. So I will fish through my pack to get that. And then I will use that to kind of poke that out instead to look around um, each corner of the hallway. Okay. Keeping with your perception from when you first enter to walk down this hallway, to the right, when you peek around the corner with the mirror, you see a hallway that ends in rubble. It seems that that hallway, wherever it goes, has been blocked off by the hallway collapsing in. Um, so it, you cannot traverse that way unless you feel like spending hours trying to move rocks. Don't. <laughs> I, yes, Vigo is not. It's like there goes the whole stream that. is just us digging out rocks. <laughs> <laughs> right. Would mold earth work Yeah, that? I was about to say, I was like, you say one hour, but I have a cantrip that gets used every six seconds where I just, it's just like, I'm imagining it's like Vigo sees Willow like start to like well, we could always move it. We can always move it just a little bit. Just Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> it turns into a Minecraft simulation for <laughs> like I will game. say, if you decide to try and do that, you do not know the uh, how sturdy the foundation and the structure is. So for all you know, you might just make everything collapse. Yeah, that that's the actual part that once I realized as I was going to do it, I'm imagining it goes through her head. She's like, wait, we could move it. Oh, no, wait, we actually don't have a table. <laughs> She'll probably not. So, so Willa kind of made one of these expressions. <gasps> yeah, basically, it was like a, wait, we could. OK, but we could. No, wait, no, that's worse. No, never mind. Me, whenever I get ideas. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I gotta think that one through more. Yeah. But what do we see if we start heading to the left? 
when the mirror is turned to see to the left, um, you see a bit of the hallway. Thank you for that ping. Um, you see the hallway kind of opens, seems to open up into a cavern or a room of some form. You're uh, not 100% sure of its dimensions or anything, um, but it seems to open up. And you can kind of see from the angle you are at that the hallway also then turns to keep going up. It looks like we'll come to another four-way intersection, but the path towards the left will lead into something larger. Would we like to continue going forward, or do we want to check out this room? It looks like it opens up a bit. I mean, I wider spaces are harder to get trapped in, so I would think the wider room would be better. Yeah, I'd like to check out the room also. He just, Willow just starts moving ahead. Are you going to stealth in or just walk in? You assume I can stealth, and I like that you do. <laughs> now, Fal Falna ain't stealthed either. Both I have disadvantage and minus one to stealth. Both of yes. you assume that I, a paladin, can in fact stealth. <laughs> I made a paladin who could stealth. I was about before. to say, yeah, dexadins are, are a thing. I'm just not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is great sword and scale mail. I will stay at the back if people decide that they want to sneak up ahead. Like I'll I'll be like um at this area, so to speak, or like right here more, like kind of keeping watch from the corner if people want to go sneak ahead. I'm not that interested in stealth either. Uh, I would hope not, you seven-foot tree. <laughs> <laughs> and seven-foot tree. <laughs> and Hilda's just like, I mean, I, I can try. I'm just short, but I can try. Uh, what? You're what like average do. height for a dwarf. She's like 4'7", I think, is how tall I made her. That's like pretty average for a dwarf. Well, yeah, but compared to the seven-foot dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just perfect yeet opportunities. Right, exactly. Yeet me, chief! <laughs> <laughs> yeet. Also, if I... your legs get tired, you could hop on my back. <laughs> <gasps> Yay! I... Why is every game I've played with Meg involves a yeeting of some sort of episode? I don't understand. It is, this is it's, a brand. it's a brand. It is. The brand. It really is. If I'm not yeeting, I'm yoinking. So. I mean, yeet is one of my favorite words to say, so... Willow, Willow is not going to stealth. I don't think Willow is the type to, like... She has very high passive perception, so I think she just thinks she'll notice anything before it gets to her. She's just used to dangerous things being around her with creatures, so she's carrying forward. Regardless if Vigo stop, uh, carries forward with her, she's just like, okay, well, we have we have a direction, so let's, let's be heading in. It's just like tapping the stone along with the staff that she has with her. So position yourselves how you're going to enter the room and... For those that are going to try to stealth, roll a stealth check, please. See how bad roll 20 hates me. It Pretty hates bad. me. <laughs> Ooh, that's why I roll IRL. <laughs> eh, it's hit or miss, depending. Oh. Sorry. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to make that joke. Okay. Uh... Is anyone else going to try and stealth in? No. Nope. No. 
time to edit it. And, you know, just following the Tauren is, is not subtle. Yeah, it it's not. just not. I want to play a one-page RPG where you have the two stats of yeet and yoink. <laughs> <It's just laughs> Lasers and feelings hacks, but it's just yeah. yeet and yoink. Yes. <laughs> Either you are giving things to people, or you're taking them away. <laughs> the bonus well, action is Kobe! <laughs> since y'all are entering the room, is anyone going to... Oh, can I actually go to the right thing? Anyone going to line up along this wall so they can see into the room? Which I just wall? want to make sure everyone can see, because I'm going to be having y'all roll perception checks. Oh, okay. Yeah, Move in like here. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> Pretty sure that's like two feet in Dragonborn, so it's whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In <laughs> Dragonborn, <laughs> height is measured differently. Like walked over someone. <laughs> he literally just like stepped over me. <laughs> Magnificent. All right. Everyone, roll perception. I'm scared. That's a nat one. That's a uh, nat one. Will right. see everything. Willow sees everything. I have plus eight in perception to begin with. Wow. And yeah, mine was a natural one, one also. Yeah, Fauna's just still yeah, yeah. thinking about how Willow woke her up. <laughs> Willow's just like just very calmly like just tapping through, but like keeping her eyes out. <laughs> what what do what do my keen elven eyes see? <laughs> so <laughs> Willow sees everything and you are very confused as to what you are seeing. Cause you are seeing creatures of some form, but you haven't seen these before. Disclaimer: The tokens aren't actually what you're seeing, but I'm. But they're there as proxies. So, Willow sees some baddies. Y'all seeing them? Yes. To our yes. We are. <laughs> to yeah. your growing horror. Uh oh. That's a lot. Oh, that is oh wonderful. Yes. Welcome to combat. Back. Yep. <laughs> Everybody roll initiative. Shit. Um, Willow, you see five course. you see five bird folk skeletons and Two things you're really not 100 percent sure what they are, but they kind of look like birds, but they have these really weird, creepy eyes, and you're just not 100 percent sure what they are. But damn, do they look creepy? Oh, I got another natural twenty. <laughs> I'm glad that you like get somebody. Wow, okay, uh, uh, right? <laughs> oh, it. Um, I have it set so that it does my dex, just in case someone else ties with me. Yes. Uh, which, uh, yeah. Considering how low everyone rolled, that might be the case. Hey, except for Phoenix. Except for yeah. Oh, and, well, and hey. Like... There you go. You two got. You two got this. Roll, roll twenty loves you. Just yep. the rolls that don't matter as much. <laughs> and this should have matters. <laughs> no, I mean it actually does matter. Uh, so. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am going to be using paper for initiative tracker because I. Mm -hmm. Don't know how to set it up on roll twenty, so help keep me honest, y'all. Yeah, no worries. And I'm going to let me finish writing these down. Y'all prepare your weapons. Have fun. <laughs> y'all's initiatives are fun, y'all. How many times? <laughs> I mean, hey. you say y'all in a sentence. I got the lucky <laughs> number <laughs> seven. I didn't want to say, say it, but. <laughs> Great. I mean, y'all is a good word. It is. It's, it's just really it's funny a... for, for me to hear a lot because I am Texan, so it, I just... I I'm, not a, 
I'm a native born Pennsylvanian, but yeah. Oh, I'm from hey. Maryland, but a lot of my mom's side is from Virginia. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I guess funny, I should admit, but also, yeah, right, yeah. I mean, I guess I shouldn't mention that a lot of my mom's family is from Alabama. Oh, honey, Ooh. yeah. All right, so let's oh, get these. I've, I've, I've never heard Lily laugh that hard about a takedown by someone. <laughs> Virginia jokes are funny. <laughs> All right, so let's roll their initiative. Oh no! Oh no! I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone's going before me. Doomed. Just because, like, know. leaning against the wall, like, filing her talents. And the last, the very creepy ones, they're fun. Um, so it's, it's bird folk and two that I don't really know what it is, correct? The reason why you can recognize the five as being bird folk is some of them look similar to your... Uh, Riffin, to your friend Riffin, standing at the entrance. Oh, well, that's just extra sad. Um, but the others, they look kind of similar to birds, but more creepy with, like, some red eyes, and they're also bigger. Oh, joy. Sure. Hobble Fright. I love the name. Names make me so That's happy. a good name. It's both weird right. and terrifying. Do I, I have? I do have colorful markers right here. Sweet. I'm making sure I can see the initiative order. So first up is Willow. Okay. Is there enough time for me to just ask a very quick thing of the party before I take my turn? Yes, go for it. I'm still numbering the the okay, order okay, of play. Uh, we have company, not the, uh, we have company, not the friendly kind. Uh, would you care for me to summon a big friend to help us out, or should I wait on that? Uh, quickly, quickly. Up to oh, you. Oh, scary birds. Scary yeah. Birds. We Why should not? test ourselves against them first. See if we can spare some of our more powerful abilities. Fair enough. And in that case, I'll see uh, if uh, my own metal is worth it. Uh, and she will uh, begin weaving her hands together uh, in a couple of circles. And then she will like make a gesture like she's puffing out her chest and like flexing her arms. And she's going to cast Polymorph on herself and turn into a giant ape. Ooh. All righty. <laughs> I have the stats already uh, pulled up, uh, Christine, for uh, the ape. Okay. Um, she, that takes my action to do that, though. So she is. Okay, probably Kiska's a little, I think, in her mind, squishier. So she's going to just. I think she has enough movement speed because a giant ape has uh, 40 feet of movement. She is going to rush hmm. forward and just be a blocker for. Kiska, so that Kiska can do stuff but not face an immediate physical threat. Why so you're a blocker without first strike, then? Unfortunately. Easy problem. Easy MTG problem. jokes. I was like, wait a minute. God damn it. <laughs> I didn't get it. It went over my head. <laughs> I, you said first strike, and I was like, wait, what is that in? Oh, God, it's in perception. <laughs> yeah, so no, that's my turn. I'm just to be honest as a DM before I move to the next person, here is everybody's initiative tracker. See? See? A lot I'm keeping initiative. track. I'm being honest. Thank you. I love you, Christine. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's going to be her whole turn. You'll just see her go from the... I think she's only like five foot two. She's a very small bean, relatively <laughs> speaking. And then she just turns into about a 12 foot tall <gasps> giant ape. But, but the fur is all white and uh, white and brown. You got a growth spurt. A bit, a <laughs> but yeah, friend of Kiska, that's my turn. Okay, Willow. I wait. I'm sorry. I just finished my turn. That's what I was. Keep me honest. Go again. 
<laughs> just to go and destroy everything. Have fun. I mean, if you want me to get another action and stuff, I'm okay with that. I, I'm fully okay with this. I looked at number two, but I looked up at number one's name. <laughs> so, so number two is Yilda. Yay. Okay. Uh, she's going to take. Well, she's gonna ready her her silver her frick her silvered war pick. I can't word, and just kind of steady herself as she goes towards. Where am I? This one, and I can't see. One, two, three, four, five. I think. Or do I only have? What's my movement? If you can move 30, that's six squares. Mm, um, I'm 25, it, so yeah. I hit I hit the five. Okay. So she's just there, and she's just like, oh, shit. <laughs> Do you have any ranged weapons you could use? Or cast any spells, because you still have your action. I do. I mean, my war pick can be a ranged weapon. I've done it before. Um... Just it. <laughs> the quote of uh, this game, y'all eat it. Yes. Your pick perhaps will have been yoked later on in the... It probably will. And yoinked. <laughs> I will do Slayer's Prey. Let me get to the thingamabob. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There we go. So I'm going to do Slayer's Prey, and if I can get the damn thing to do what I needed to do. See if I can get it to cooperate. Yay, D20, thank you for doing what I never want you to do. Cooperating? There we go! Yay! So what does this button do? Oh! Yes. Monster Slayers are fun. Wouldn't know. She's my first one, so. You have the point at that one. Yeah. So she's just like, <laughs> get it! So you're Basically. going to mark that one. Let me Let's see. Green dot means it's you've marked it. Yes, okay. And that is your bonus action. Correct. To designate a creature. And I believe that is... You still have your action. I do. Yeah, I think as she does that, she she goes and she'll take out the, the many weapons that she currently has. Uh, take out um, a javelin and just yoink. Don't you mean yeet? Same shit. Cause yoink I'm yoinking it out of where I've got it and then I'm yeeting it at him. It's Fair just enough. real fast. It's just so. And again, roll twenty. Roll to hit. Da, da, da. And that's at a skeleton. Here we go. Ah! Did it double send? send it did not send. double send. Okay. I only see one. Um, okay, cool. I just heard the double bubbles. But, uh, you sadly miss. Yep, I figured. That's okay. Your, your javelin, you throw it, and instead of it hitting here, hitting the creature, it kind of goes up and hits the wall and breaks. Oh. So, Could I'm sorry. You've lost a javelin. And is that your turn? Yep. Just well, shit. Up. All right, so next up 
are the cobble frights. They're all going to move on, on the same initiative orders, like the cobble frights on one and the uh, bird folk skeletons on another. So cobble frights can move 30 feet. Yes. So this one's just going to Move up there with that guy. And this one as well is going to move 30 feet forward. And no one is within range. Um, so they just kind of make screeching sounds at you at all of you uh that is their turn up next are the skeletons <laughs> baddies back go back to back y'all have fun with that all right giant ape i fear no skeleton it's just, you just go very King Kong, yell at them, and just blah, like back at them. They can they also move thirty feet. All right, so uh, they're. I was gonna say, I, I figure like they can be making screeching sounds. Probably everyone is only hearing Willow's giant ape growls in this old dungeon. It's like so. It's just an extension of her normal loud self, but it's monkey noises this time. Oop, I don't want to move that one. That's the one I wanted to move. That one moves up closer to you. This one also comes closer. Yeah. There. Not in the eldest square, please. There. And one last one. So... Go, go right up to Yelda. What is the only downside to their tokens? I keep clicking on the opposite one. <laughs> Alright, so they've all moved. Now it's time for their attacks. Willow has two on her. And they're going to so one is going to attack with short sword. Does an eight hit? Nope. Okay, and then the I second- I have a armor class, but an eight does not hit me. All right, so the second one is also going to hit or attack, roll to attack. Does a 19 hit? Unfortunately, that hits me here. Okay, three damage. All right, and I- so that'll be three points off of the 157 points that the ape has. <laughs> okay. And, uh, Weird flex, but I... Saves, <laughs> um, but... Uh... Oh, no, wait, it rolled... So the first one would have been a six, but as an ape, I have plus four. So that's exactly what I need to maintain the spell. Okay. Just barely. Just barely. <laughs> All right. I would have been sad if that would have happened. One of the skeletons is going to attack Yilda. Does a 16 hit? Nope. No? The other one's also going to attack you, Yilda, since... You're the one that started throwing stuff. <laughs> you started it. <laughs> and I definitely take it that an 11 does not hit. Correct. So. Do you know what's gonna? Me. So that is uh, their turn. Vigo. 
Vigo into action. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Am I also in range of this one? Yes. Because they're, they're large. Okay. Then that's exactly where I want to be. Um, Vigo swings around the side. Uh, to get the Yilda so we can go back to back against these things. And I am going to target this one as Yilda has the other marked with Slayer's Prey. Um, I have extra attack, so two great swords coming at this thing. Uh, 21 8 damage. On this one here? On this or... one right here. Okay, so the one that's not marked. Yeah, so one that's not marked. Yeah. So, thir so eight. So, you, uh, yeah, 21 definitely hits. <laughs> um, and is that second attack also on the same? Yes, yes, it's on the same one. Oh, good lord. <laughs> it dead. Paladins, we get the job done. Skeletons. <laughs> sure. Super squishy. <laughs> I, I really hope Kiska just destroys like seven of them and then just like looks over at Vigo and doesn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, please. Please. I kind of need that to happen too. <laughs> okay, is that all you're doing on your turn? Um... Everything else will find is like a long rest recovery. So yes, I don't want to burn any resources. Vigo will just cut this thing down. And once it's down, he takes his boot and he grinds it onto one of the bones, snapping it and powdering it beneath it, and stares at the cobble fright. Are you trying to be intimidating? Um, he is- That's basically the look that Yilda's given you too. It's like- <laughs> <laughs> Overcompensating gets you nowhere, dear. Just kill it. <laughs> it must. It must understand. It's been beaten. So, if that is your turn, we'll move on to Falna. Alrighty, uh, Falna is going to cast a spiritual weapon, and it is going to take the form of a flaming hammer of her goddess, and it's going to be right here in between her and Yilda. Uh, and that's a bonus action, and it, because I cast it, I get to make a attack with it against the marked skeleton. So... Uh, does a 10 hit? Against a skeleton? Yeah. No. Uh, okay. Well, I still have my normal attack. Okay, I am... 26 up. probably hits, though, right? Look, you have a hammer. Yeah. Uh, 26 does hit. Uh, that is 6 bludgeoning and 4 fire. Good lord. Yeah. Divine strike. <laughs> just come in with my hammer, just like that. that. Not the ha hammer, more of a distraction. The mace just comes in and wham! Anything else? Are you going to move uh, at all? Or? Nope, that's it. Okay. Um, you can tell that that bird skeleton's pretty crushed right now, but is still standing. Mm. Just for that one swing. Mm -hmm. um, and to wrap up this first round of combat, Kiska! Okay. Uh, Kiska is going to cast a spell that is going to be centered like right here, cause it ha wait no, like right here. It has a twenty foot radius, so it should catch all of them. 
in, in, uh, a little further. Wait, let me do over here then. I don't want to catch our, yeah, there we go. Okay. So all four of them. Um, and she's going to reach out her hand and like she's dropping something. And like from the floor is this swirling uh, like ice and hail storm in a cylinder. And she is casting ice storm. Okay. Uh, let me click on it. It is a, um, did that come up in chat? Like the description should come up. Oh, wait, here we go. Uh, it's a, um, deck save. Okay. A lot of damage right out the gate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we need... Three bird skeleton deck saves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. <laughs> hmm. I need a second monitor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. And the DC is 16. All right. So one fails, two fails, one succeeds. Okay. And you also got the cobble fright in there. And they need to roll their decks as well. Do they have any? I am a mumbling DM as I go through what I'm doing, by the way. Organize uh, your thoughts, and it's a helpful method of doing so. Yep. <laughs> they do not also get really any bonuses to that. So Still they also succeed. So okay. I'm going to mark the ones that failed with a blue dot. OK. Because they'll take their full damage. So, yes. Um, and because I am a silver dragon, you can go ahead and add four on there to that cold damage. Um, because that's my elemental affinity. Okay, so... So it's 34 points of damage total if they These didn't save. Two are completely dead. So 34 halved is 17. Mm -hmm. <laughs> even though even though that one saved, it still went way over its health point threshold. <laughs> <laughs> it, it tries to dodge out of the way and gets pretty far out of it, but the force of the spell still winds up hitting it as it tries to dodge out of the way and knocks it against the wall, and it just crumples to the ground. So, they all got that. Yep. Um, Kiska's gonna look over at Vigo and, like, hold up three fingers. <laughs> Vigo nods <laughs> approvingly. <laughs> Vigo's gonna fuck with Dragonborn. <laughs> uh, are we just gonna start having like the the, the uh, what happens it's to the board play? Oh my god! It is that the rest of your turn, Kiska? Yeah, that's You're the rest of your turn. You're not gonna move anywhere. No, I'm going to stay right where I am. Got it. With that, we're going to go into the second round of Comet, and we're getting close to break. So let's... You guys are doing pretty well. Um, top of the round, Willow. Hey, uh, Willow, seeing that those are destroyed... Uh... The most thinking 
well thought out person in uh, the giant ape form, so she is just gonna go directly into the t difficult terrain and just try and go take punches at the combo fight. Because it's difficult terrain, uh, it would cost her more movement, but she has reach as a giant ape, so uh, it doesn't matter to an extent because she can still make it with her 40 feet of movement. So she is gonna just reel back both of her fists and try and clock the cobble fright in the face. Okay. So first roll is a 22. And that hits. The second roll is an 11. That does not. Okay, uh, so one of her hits, that's gonna be 3d10 plus six bludgeoning damage because giant apes hit hard. That's 27 points of damage. Oof. Ouch. It's just a giant monkey. It knows how to do one thing, punch things very, very hard. Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's gonna stay there. That's the performance and... is to go punchy punchy. All right. You moved, you attacked, that's all you're doing? Yeah, and I have no bonus action, so it's the next person's turn in the initiative track. Yelda. Okay, so she's gonna get mad and take her war pick and whack this motherfucker in the head. So just swing up and over and just... Okay. And you're attacking the skeleton? Yeah, the one I've got marked. Okay. That's a 10. A 10 uh, does not hit. Don't you have extra attack? Yes, yes I do. So I'm gonna do it again! Do it! <laughs> Just be like, I said, die. That hits! Thank god. On what? <laughs> Very weird. Something now. You should uh, click the silvered war pick thing. Yeah, click your weapon name and it'll give you your damage. Right. There you go. Ease. It's almost max damage. And. Plus... Oh, plus your uh, slay effect as well. It, you don't even bother have to adding that in. Your pick goes like just. Yoink. It. It's it's crushed on the ground. So, congrats. All of the bird folk skeletons are dead. I participated. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else you would like to do on your on your turn? Move, because you still have your movement. Um, yeah. Bonus action. She's just going to stay right there. All right. <coughs> and that, with that being the end of your turn, moves us into the baddie's turn, which is the cobble fright. And we are going to take our break right now. So thank you again to all of our sponsors, and thank you all for coming up and watching. Um, so as we had to break, if you want to check out Roll20, uh, head over to roll20.net slash start, and you can sign up for a free account. It's a lot of fun. I use a free account. There's some pretty cool things there. Um, all, over 4 million people use Roll20's virtual tabletop to power their favorite games. Um, and with modules galore on the marketplace, you'll definitely find something for your group to enjoy. So please. Go check that out. Thank you all. We'll be back shortly. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. If you get a second during break, you should check out one of our amazing sponsors. We're now proudly sponsored by Roll20, the best virtual tabletop for all your role-playing needs. Over 4 million people use Roll20's virtual tabletop to power their favorite games. And with more modules than you can shake a stick at on their new revamped storefront, you'll definitely find something for your group to enjoy. Sign up today by clicking the link below. 
or heading to roll20.net front slash start front slash WTTP. Tabletop Loot is an amazing place to get your dice, dice bags, dice boxes, and more. And now you can get 15% off your purchase at tabletoploot.com by using the code WTTPDICE at checkout. Tabletop Loot, your party starts here. While you're at it, check out our so awesome merch store, So Nerdware. So Nerdware is the place to find all your Welcome to the Party merch and other amazing stuff too. Head on over to SoNerdware.com and use the code WELCOME at checkout to get 10% off your next purchase. So Nerdware, it's what the nerds wear. Devin Rue, the amazing mistress of maps, has kindly supported the channel since the beginning and provides graphics for many of our streams. Head on over to RueInc.com to check out some of the best fantasy cartography on the web. Our Patreon supports the creators and producers of the channel by providing Roll20 subscriptions, cost coverage for video hosting, and more. If you want to support the channel while getting podcasts a week early, gaming articles that are published on Patreon first, a shout-out during our break, and more, head on over to patreon.com front slash welcomepartyrpg and throw us a buck or five. And last, but certainly not least, help out the party. Subs and bits not only support the stream, but also every 500 bits or a tier 1 sub gives a player or DM of your choice a reroll or system equivalent, and every 1000 bits or tier 2 sub gives a player or DM of your choice a crit or system equivalent. Thanks again for hanging out with us today. The game will be back in just a few minutes. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat.
Hi, y'all, and welcome back to our players exploring the Ferna Ruins and getting into their first combat. They have already completely obliterated the bird folk skeletons. But what's left behind are the two cobble freights that none of them have ever seen, and they're all like, what the hell are these things? They're creepy. And where we ended was their turn. So we're gonna jump right back into the combat with the cobble freights attacking. That one will move up, and that one will move up. All right, Yilda, I'll be attacking you first. Fake, but okay. Hmm? Sounds fake, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta switch things up here. <laughs> Willow can't have all of the first glory. I mean, a will can't be the one being terribly bludgeoned by unholy creatures. <laughs> or or clawed. They claws. use claws. So it can't happen. Clawing is just acceptable too. Yeah. Uh three claw attacks come at you, Yilda. Ow. Ow is right. <laughs> Okay. That is 18 points of damage. And the... I get take it a 22 also hits? Yes. Okay. Six slashing. And the last claw. Nah. Nah. You you dodged that one. <laughs> I learned from the first two. <laughs> you did. You did. You tried your best, but that first claw just came out of nowhere and surprised you. Um, the second one, still surprising, but not as much as the first. And so the last one, you're like, no. <laughs> I say no, my dear creature. Yeah. Willow. Yours also does three claw attacks on you. Drop the monkey form. Does a 12 that, hit? That just hits. Oh. Five damage. Okay, and I have to roll con save to see if this works at advantage because I have four casters. That'll you, work. you're good. Um, next one? Next one? Just... That, that's, if it's 12 or higher, you're gonna hit me. Six damage. 43, so I gotta beat a 10. Yes. On save. Yep, at advantage, that's 15. Or seven. You're good. Okay, monkey. Alright, last one. It's not, I'm not very hard to hit. I'm like a 15 foot tall monkey. Eight damage. <laughs> However, I have 135 hit points left, so I'm okay. Oh, thank God I picked wow. Warcaster. Oh, I love Warcaster. Thank God so for much. advantage. Thank yeah. God for Warcaster. <laughs> nice. Anyone watching this who's never played, Warcaster is always a good feat to take. Mm -hmm. It is. For a bad it, time to take Warcaster. It really is. Especially if you're doing. Uh, like tanky clerics. My one cleric has it and it's perfect. Um, but those three attacks come at each of you and some horrendous shrieking as well because y'all have invaded their space. So uh -uh. you're getting attacked. And that is their turn. We have no more skeleton no more skeletons. All the skellies are by. Uh, so, Vigo. Vigo, indeed. So, uh, seeing that these creatures can hit, uh, pretty hard, apparently, and are quite scary. Uh, Vigo, one, two, three, and that's, that's melee, right? Yeah, you're within melee range. 
is it po it is possible to stand here because I could just stand on on the dead body, right? Yes, it it's literally just crumpled yeah, bones on yeah, the ground. Yeah, yeah. You I can stand, stand on, on it. Yeah, I I stand on that and um, I go after this thing. I am recklessly attacking. Okay. So I have advantage to hit on both of these. Uh, does a 23 hit? Uh, I believe so, yes. Yes? That's, yes. So that's 11 damage. Uh, no it's not, because as I bring the blade down, I channel the fury of my god and the storm into it, and I smite it as well. Oh, <laughs> this is gonna so, this is the moment where 20. The kicks out. That's 20. And then I get another attack. Uh, Christine, is it undead? Or yes. Ah, yeah, that's They're all extra. undead. So you get another D8. Yeah. Minus oh, seven more. That's 27 points of damage. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's and undead. second attack. I don't think a 12 hits. <laughs> a 12 sadly does not hit. Damn it. Radiant Holy Divine Smite. Ha ha ha. I can crush this. Do, do I want to burn this right now? Actually, no, I no, I can't because you already said you already said it doesn't hit. Never mind. Never mind. It's an ability I had that I could have turned that into a hit, but we All are right. good. Um, so yeah, that's my turn. That's your turn. Okay. Falna. All right. I'm going to move up here, and I am going to attack with uh, my mace. And because I figured you're gonna move it. Well, yeah. Uh, does I don't suppose an eleven hits. No. It's pretty big. Okay. Uh, and then I will make an attack. Uh, with my spiritual weapon. Twenty six again. Twenty six. Well, wow. no, no, it does. I'm, it does it. <laughs> it's uh, in form. Oh no! Eight damage. Okay. Anything else? Uh, nope. That's my action and bonus. And your move as well. Yep. Okay. Kiska. Okay. Um, Kiska is going to. Hold on one second. I gotta check the specs on one of her spells. Um, Kiska is going to um, like sort of raise her hand behind her, like she's about to heft a javelin, mm -hmm. um, and. She is going to cast Ray of Frost and use her meta magic to twin it. Um, oh. And when she goes like that, these two like um, huge icicles shoot out and target both of uh, those um, claw things. I already forgot their name. I'm sorry about that. Oh, That's pretty nice. impressive. <laughs> That's fine. Your your character doesn't even know what they're called. Right, exactly. So it's fine. She didn't even see them at first. <laughs> the creepy things that are left. You got it. <laughs> right, whatever. Does the um, spell require line of sight is my only question. Let us see. Hmm. Do I not have line of sight? So... You can it just says a frigid one. It says a frigid beam of blue white light streaks toward a creature within range, which is the range is sixty feet. Doesn't say you have to see it. It doesn't. And no. it doesn't say you don't have to see it. You could you can throw a curveball. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is There's like a, a a glint or something and she like sees like you know a reflection 
<laughs> Imagining a, a seven and a half foot tall dragonborn no scoping with magic towards two creatures. Uh, does a twenty two hit? Yes. I'm guessing yes. Okay. Uh, and then the second one is a thirteen. Thirteen does not hit. So okay. which one are you? Wh so, where is the first beam going? I'm guessing it's going to the the first one's going down here to the one you can clearly see. Yeah, and the, the purple one's going up here. Yes, exactly. Okay. So so, so the first one hits the second one. Okay, fine. She had to curve it. It didn't quite get it. It shatters before it hits them. But the first one um, does twelve plus four cold damage. Ah, plus four more. Okay. Yes, she gets a plus four for every cold spell. Nice. Mm -hmm. Would you like to move so you can either have better advantage points for I, your spells? Or I, yeah, I think I'm going right where you're at. I'm going to move a little bit forward. One, two of the spells. Uh. I'm going to Actually, there's a lot of people over that way. I'm I'm going to move this way. Okay. Right there. Is that all? Yep, that is my turn. Okay, back to the top of the round with Willow. Uh, I'm gonna bop it in the face with my fist. Do it. That's a 20 total to hit. A natural 20. That hits. So I will roll the damage because I don't know if this thing's ready to go yet. So that's 17 points of bludgeoning damage. Alright. still standing. It is still standing. Alright, now bop it again with the other fist. Okay. And that is going to be a Sadly, does not hit. That's a thirteen. No, I I don't think it likes its snoot being booped more than once. Unfortunately, especially with such a large fist. It's a it's a very it's just a white and brown haired ape just like going like pop pop. And then the other one tries to go again on the other side and it doesn't work. But yeah, she's she's doing her job. She just needs to stick by and she's just making sure Kiska can't get hit. So that's um, it. All right. Yilda. Okay, so let's try this again. So she's gonna do um, Slayer's Prey to this guy that I'm staring at, this one. And then she's gonna gear up to swing her war pick. Please work. Oh, thank God. 21 hits. Yes, and then... Eight piercing damage. Plus one d6. Oh, that's true. Mer, mer, mer. Mer. Fourteen. Nice. Very nice. Yes. Fire. Oh, hack. And then I have my extra attack, and I'm gonna do the same thing again, and just go swing and backhand it, basically. So I swing one way, and then just bah! wham, wham. Yes. 26 hits. Went to the other end of the spectrum. The first ones were like 10, 6, <laughs> 10. Now it's 26, 21. And that. So, mine for that. Okay. So he got 9 damage and she just quacky whacky. Does the D6 happen again? No, I think the D6 is only for the first one. Okay. Wanted to be 100% sure. So minus nine more damage. Yes, correct. Right. So yeah, it's only the first time that I that I whack it. Got it. Is that your turn? Yes. Okay. The Cobble Fright's turn. Okay. <laughs> so this one is, this one down here is just going to attack Willow again with uh, uh, 
three claws. Willow. Yeah, yeah, the, the 24 is double my AC. Eight. So eight points, so I need to beat a 10, please. Forecaster. No. Oh. I am back to being Willow. That last one probably like sticks me in the gut, and I don't, because I'm like probably having a moment of being absent minded and start looking at the next one that I'm going to punch. The, the claw just comes in, and I'm just like, oh no. And I'm. Average height willow again. There are still two more attacks on you, Willow. Yep. yep. Have at it. That just beats my armor class. Alrighty. Oddly enough, I have a much higher armor class as a druid. <laughs> so five damage with that one. Okay. Last attack. Does a seventeen hit? Nope. Armor class eighteen. You You recover yourself enough from switching back to your human form or your normal form. I guess I forget what your race is, I'm sorry. Wood Elf. Wood Elf. You revert back to your Wood Elf form and you're a little disoriented at first, but by that that very last swing, you're jumping out of the way, going, nope. It's like, nope. It's like, nope. oh. It was, it was nice being big for once. <laughs> oh shit, no! <laughs> <laughs> and then... The other Cobble Fright is going to attack Vigo. Yeah, I saw that coming. Um, it has advantage. Oh. Because yeah. I, re I reckless attacked. That's why, I got a little, that's why I got a little red dot on my yeah. thing. And the Cobble Fright's going to try and grab you. What? Oh. I don't. Um, no. Yeah, no, well, no, it's with advantage, so that's what the 24 would be it. What the f- <laughs> Oh my god. Ow. You can escape with a DC of 15 on your next turn. On my next turn. Oh god. So, you are grappled. Great. You also have to make a DC 15 strength saving throw, or you take damage. Bludgeoning okay. damage. Okay, um, so... Uh, 11. You take 13 points of bludgeoning damage. That's a bruise. It's fine. Still up. Because it grabs you and it kind of squeezes you for a bit. Vigo grabs onto its wrist and starts squeezing that back. <laughs> <laughs> My dear Vigo, you are trying to squeeze bone. But you no. have been grappled. No comment. Um, yes. No. So, <laughs> we get to have fun with that the next round. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> 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 no, Unless you're able to break, because that is their turn, and you're next. I am next. Uh, do I have fucking anything that can help? I don't think I do. I just have to make the save at that point. Just lick yep. it. Oh, no, yeah. I on your teammates. I'm sorry. What is it? Uh, DC 15. DC 15, and I believe it's it just DC. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. for breaking it. Alright. Oh, God. No. Oh, no. Is that, is that more damage, then? No. No, it's just, I'm just... I, no, I, you're I, trying to break it. You're trying to... Because you're it. holding on to it. You're trying to yank it off of you. But you're like, I can't find complete grip yet. Because okay. you're holding... You're trying to grip smooth bone. I mean... Part of it is gripping, part of it is, like, using the pommel of the sword and just trying to, like, bash this thing's arm off. Like, oh, break through the bone. <laughs> it's like, get off, get off, get off, get off. This, this, is, this is not <laughs> dignified or, or, <laughs> or controlled in any measure. You have a little bony ass keeping you in place. You are bony grappled, hard, and I believe bony. all you can do during it's your turn is try 
to escape break. the grapple. Yeah, which I cannot. You so do not. So that is your turn. Falna. Alrighty. I guess it Falna's to me. <laughs> Please kill her. My situation yeah. is bad enough already. <laughs> You're welcome. V- I'm v- great. V- Thank you very much. Vico's sitting there like, "Please just let me die at this point." <laughs> it's fall in her shoulders. Oh god, this is where everyone starts being unable to. <laughs> How long were you waiting to drop okay. that? Bonus action, spiritual weapon. 18? 18 does hit. Yes. Okay. Uh, and that is 5 force damage. Okay. Is that your turn? That is my turn. Kiska. Okay. Um... Let's see. Uh, Kiska is going to move around here. I really don't want to be this close to this thing. But, um, and uh, is going to do, going to, um, is going to cast Ray of Frost again and uh, spend another uh, sorcery point um, to twin it and Uh uh, target them both once again. Okay. See if it works better this time. 23 does hit. Okay, so I'm going to say she, um, the first one is to that one that she's right next to. Okay. And this... Oh, come on! That... No. That hits the ground, like, right in front of it. Right in front, yeah. I really can't get that one farther away. Uh, okay, so 8 plus 4, so that is 12 damage to the one right in front of her. Okay. And... I don't have any bonus action, so that will be Kiska's turn. Alright. Back to the top of the round with Willow. Uh, so she's seeing the scary cobble fright, which is probably much bigger than her in front of her. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's a large being. Hmm. But we're quite, we're quite terrifying. Um, let's see if this works. And she reaches into, like, another deep pocket like like from it's almost for anyone else watching it almost looks like she forgets there's a giant scary creature right there and she pulls out like a little bundle of sap and then like she cracks it and spreads it over the quarter sap that she has casting shillelagh and she's going to try and take a whack at it go and, for it and it, it the whole staff suddenly looks like it's been covered in a hardened sharpened crystal it's going to try and hit the beagle the beagle monster unfortunately it doesn't hit no, 12 does not hit. Which is a shame. But, uh, he should be fine. He should be fine. She's gonna stay there. She's, oh well. Okay. And that's all on your turn? Yeah, that's bo- bonus action for Shalele attack, and then uh, she doesn't want to move and provoke an attack of opportunity or get grappled by this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yelda. Uh. <laughs> that's, that's all she's gonna do is just be like, oh shit. Mm-hmm. No, um, she's gonna... Swing at it? Yeah. But instead of her war pick, she then goes to take the war hammer and just kind of tries to, like, hit it in the knee. You're gonna kneecap it. I'm, I want to kneecap it. it. Yes. Roll to hit. A 20 hits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! 11. Max damage. So 11 bludgeoning, yeah. And 
And with your first hit, don't forget that D6. Because of his aura. Well, okay. 12. <laughs> That's still some good damage. Yeah. yeah. Second attack? Um, her second attack, as she's... Do, as she goes to hit the knee, what she's aiming to do is basically get him to kind of distract and let go of Vigo, so I don't know how that's going to work, but um, that's kind of the, the goal for that, was to kind of see if I could startle it and let it like get it to let go of him. So it was whack at the knee, and then it's like she looks up and is like, let him go! And then she whacks the other one <laughs> with the with the more hammer. Oh, that's 20 again. 20 again. Again. And 11 points Another of damage again. Nice. Damage. Jesus, that's okay. max damage on two hits. So I busted his kneecaps. <laughs> the <laughs> kneecaps are very much cracked, but still holding Vigo, still standing. This bitch. Uh. <laughs> Not you, the stupid creature. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. <laughs> I was like, wait, <laughs> this is why I threw them at y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your turn? Yeah, that's all I can really do. Okay. Oh, please, please don't let the nine strength druid get grappled by this thing, because I will never get free. <laughs> you, you can get out via acrobatics. Poor baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, frig. <laughs> Keep my paladin, fright. dang it! <laughs> it is the cobble fright's turn. Well, and... Could it not be? <laughs> Rhythm. I'm sorry, but they're number three in turn order, and that is where we are at. I know. Yeah. Oh. Had to try. <laughs> no. Oops, there goes that bludgeoning damage. As someone says in the Twitch chat, the Cobble Fright just wants a hug. <laughs> that hug involves Thanks, breaking the, the Vigo's spine. Of the tables. Mm. Vigo so. doesn't do hugs. All right, starting with the bottom one. Oh, snap. Okay. The Cobble Fright where Kiska and Willor are at are, has now gone berserk. Oh. oh. Fuck, it's like a golem. That doesn't... That's sound bad good. at all. That's, that's I'm, I'm sure it's okay. I'm sure it's okay, Willow. Fuck, when golems go berserk, it's really bad. <laughs> Fuck. Well, okay. It attacks the nearest creature it can see. And... It... Mm. I did just try and hit it. You both did. I mean, and yeah, Kiska did on, on her you, turn, too. It's still attack. It's still going to keep going after Willow. Because Willow was the one that just kept damaging okay. it. Well, I also uh... booted Snoot, so I, I think that's probably, like, enough of a reason to be angry. Yeah, so... And consensual it's... boops don't go over well with people. <laughs> it's just going to start clawing at you. That definitely hits. And I guess it still has all of it. It still does its multi attacks. So. Yeah, no, it's mm -hmm. twelve damage. Okay. One, two. That's gonna hit. Seven damage. And three. Fourteen. Fourteen does not hit. I parry it off with the wooden shield that I have on me. It just looks like it's a bunch of like almost mulchy and rotten together berries and seeds that I've like sewn together with vines. Just Nope. So the cobble fright in, in front of you just like screeches and just starts wailing at you and that takes you by surprise so that's why you got hit those first two times but you're like no and get your shield up in time for that last one to not hit but you now have a nice gash on your shield. Yeah, um, it's, like, it's like oh my dress. And the top one also has to roll to see if it goes berserk, which is going to be really fun because it's also grappling Vigo. Mr. Cobblefright, please don't. It does not go berserk. 
<laughs> Thank you, Mr. Carbofrite. <laughs> This, this image of him going yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and being It just attempts to neutral. squeeze you again. Okay, so uh, another strength save. Plus seven on this save. Yes. Not... And. This an end? <laughs> <laughs> First part was already bad enough. Right. <laughs> yes! Okay. I save! Freedom! So half of 13 is 7. Oh shit! Damn it! <laughs> That's what I was out of. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh god. And it can do that with one per because it can grab up <sighs> two people. Hit point wow, maximum is massive. reduced wow. by the amount. Whoa! And it heals? <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, having that fun. Much, okay, that much mm. more scary. It's still mm. magical, but mm. Mm. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, it's 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 delicious. It's it's wonderful. <laughs> it's juicy. I love it. Sure. God, <laughs> fucking damn it! All right. DC fourteen. Yes. Counts speed. <laughs> but I still take half. And that is five. God damn it! That means my max is reduced by five. Max is reduced by five, and that lasts until you finish a short or long rest. Oh, I do not like these things, Sam. I am. It is not permanent. I know. Boy, it's spicy. Okay. Oh, All right. Mm. Everyone nice. suddenly pays that much more attention. We were like, oh, <laughs> skeletons went down real bad. Cobble frights haven't been too scary. I, I, there, there was a part of me that's mm -hmm. like, I, you know, should I rage? You no, know, just save it. Like, that was a dumb idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've made poor decisions with my life. The more oh. you know. <laughs> mm. And that is the Cobble frights turns. So. It's my turn, right? Here you go. Try and break the grapple. I rage. I have advantage to break the stupid grapple. Go for it. 19. That succeeds the DC 15 escape. Okay. I break the grapple. Um, that doesn't you take my whole turn, though, right? No longer grappled. I believe that takes your action, yes. It does take my action. Yeah, grapples generally take... An yeah. Mm, okay. We're good. It's fine. I'm Would ready. Would you like to keep taking necrotic damage? No, but I want to hit the thing in the face. <laughs> it's like, no, mom, but I want to kill it. Do you have <laughs> anything for bonus action? Uh, the not... rage was the bonus action, I thought. That's... Yeah, the, ra the rage is the bonus action. That's what I thought. Yeah. Well, congratulations! You have broken free of the grapple, and it cannot... Do Soul Siphon again, unless it grapples you. Okay. And now my Storm Aura comes into effect, too, so that'll be fun. Yee. Yee. Falna. Alrighty. Uh, I'm gonna make another attack with my spiritual weapon. Alright. Does a 13 hit? No. Okay. The mace is gonna hit, though. Given past history, the mace will Given the pattern, hit. yeah. Ah, uh, <laughs> if only it God. had been the natural 20. Uh, oh, God. Alright. Damage. Okay. So we're gonna have to separate this from the natural 20. So that's 1d6 plus 3 bludgeoning, and then 1d8 fire. So that's 6 bludgeoning, and... Okay. Three fire. Okay. So that's and... a total of nine. Yep. That is my action and bonus. Okay. This I thing... swear I'll heal you after the battle. I want to hit this thing. This one's starting to stagger. But it's still glaring at y'all. Yeah. Is that your turn, Falna? Yep. All That's right. Falna's turn. Kiska. 
Okay, it is time to bring out the big spell. Um, Kiska is uh, going to like point up at the sky and this like swirling cone is going to um, sort of resolve itself and then uh, plummet down. Um, I am casting a cone of cold, which Ooh. has a 60 foot radius, I believe. Let me check that really quick. Oh, a 60 cone foot cone. Let's see. I am right behind. A 60 you. foot cone. Oh, um, yes, it's it is a save. Hey, but guess what? I have careful spells, so I am going to spend one sorcery point um, to exclude up to my charisma modifier, which is four people from having to make this save. So that would be all of my allies. <laughs> uh, automatically succeed on this save. But the two uh, others do not. Uh, I mean, do don't aren't excluded. Uh, they have to make the save. They have to make the save, and it's a lot of damage. What is the that... save? On, I think it's gonna what? come up. Con save. Okay, DC sixteen con save. Ooh, right. So, how many of us are taking half? So we're all taking half of that. Yeah. No, you are not taking. Careful uh, that means we pass the save. Oh, that's right. It doesn't spell. mean you take. So we're, I'm so, so whoever sorry. Is in the range. Oh it's, no! It's I, yeah, I, it's still fine. She'll take it. Like oh, this. With yeah. It, but okay, it, so saved is fifteen. So saved is fifteen. Okay. So, yes. You probably could move around and angle it so it actually the only one who would get hit might be Falna. Let's see. If you move like um, to the south, you could probably angle the cone. Actually, you could probably angle the cone so you only hit the two like, of them. So yeah. Here. But well, you're I doing can't, a careful is... spell, so you're not gonna hit me, right? Uh, you will save on, uh, like you'll. It's a successful save, but you still take. Actually, let me read this really quickly. Good um, point to double check. I think you do still take half damage. But let me yeah. Check. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Haven't taken any damage from the monster. I'm going to yeah. get blasted by teammate. I know. Great. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's... <laughs> Friendly fire isn't that bad. <laughs> yes, it is. Especially if I'm the cleric. <laughs> look, it, it's uh, look another person on your team who can also heal all of you. <laughs> so it is. Um, it's thirty-five cold damage. Um, so half of that is yeah, seventeen or eighteen. Seventeen. Yes. So yeah. So two more. So, so uh, if if they did not save, then they take thirty-five. Okay. One saves, so the one by Willow saves. Okay. The one up with ever with the others does not save. Okay. And dots. It is Perfect. frozen and just. Yep, it's a frozen statue. Yeah. Mm hmm. With its eyes still like wide open, glaring at the party. <laughs> it's just frozen in place, giving you the stink eye. Wait, so it got this top one. Isn't this block in the way? It would it's say it, so, it, it's a like a cone. It would still so go it, up this way. It comes oh. from the sky, like comes down and is like a cone of cold. All right. I don't think I don't think it's it, like I don't have to have line of sight, and I don't. Says. 
Well, you yeah. because she cast careful spell, you're automatically going to save from it. Oh right. yeah, but I still take half, so I still take right. fifteen. What seventeen, 17 with her? Seventeen. Because I have so yeah. The results are the top one is dead. This bottom one has been hurt. Kiska save gave you automatic half save. I don't know if I got hit in the process, but you're taking seventeen. Oh. Um, took seventeen. I should probably look at its actual damage, but even with saving, it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so I know who's not getting healed. Congratulations. Y'all have survived your first battle. <laughs> what do you do now that you're not in combat? Get the fuck out. Yeah. Like, back out the entrance or continue further in? Um, As much as I love this, how, much, how are we doing on time, though? We still have about 40, mi 40 more minutes. Okay. So. We'll then go further in. Yeah. Willow will. Further in? Do you want to take a pause to heal quick? Yeah. And Willow has something that she wants to say. Oh. Yeah. Willow will stop the party and be like, wait, wait, wait. Everyone, line up. Line up real quick. I promise this has a purpose. Hold on. Everyone, get in line. <laughs> begins to trace what appears to be the outline of just a small little deer in the middle of uh, the air, and you'll see in a five-foot cube appear, taking taking that space, a very happy-looking uh, little fawn that just sort of like touches its little feet to the ground. And I'm going to use healing spirit. Nice. <laughs> because it just basically takes the form of a nice benevolent spirit and it lasts a minute and basically the reason that she told you to line up is that anytime you enter it for the first time on a turn or start your turn there you restore 1d6 hit points so basically if we could do like 10 rounds of healing where you just conga line through and you could get a total of 10d6 healing for the entire party <laughs> so we just roll 10d6 I I, guess. I'm rolling it right now basically uh. so you all recover 30 points of health. Okay. With one second level spell for one minute. So this takes less time. We can still keep adventuring, but it tops everyone off who needed it. And it costs less spell slots overall. So this is why Healing Spirit's a great spell. So y'all are healed. Yeah shake the bone dust off of yourselves and you continue on please put yourselves in formation <laughs> don't stand on top of each other no i want to be in front <laughs> this time don't step on the on the small um, small elven lady i'm sure as a new i'll actually stay near the back <laughs> What? Get no, I has higher passive perception. <laughs> God okay, damn. Stop moving! <laughs> I'm in front. <laughs> okay, Fauna. Yes. Willow. Vigo. Yelda. Kiska. Yes. <laughs> okay. You don't have to worry about that hallway you just traveled down. It's safe. <laughs> y'all were, were walking down trying to figure out your own damn order. <laughs> and then you realized you, you made it down the hallway with nothing happening. So, Holly, you're standing, so. In, you're standing yeah. in the middle of an intersection. To your yeah. right, you can see a door. To your left, a uh, hallway opens up into another room, and then hallway straight ahead. I'm gonna... I'm thinking about the door. Okay. Okay, uh, I go over to the door. Uh, is okay. it locked? So, with this door, on either side of it are... Oh, oh crap, I didn't write that down. <laughs> Give me one second while I pull it up from my phone. No problem. 
adventure party combat. Adventure party combat. Adventure party combat. So on either side of the door are two bronze heads with open mouths. One is a deer and the other is a wolf. And between them is the door. You have to figure out how to unlock the door because it is locked. But what you see are these two statues on either side of the door. So when you try the door, it is locked. Okay, it is locked. It. Uh, what material is the door made out of? Wood. Okay, I want to try and kick in the door. The uh, bronze heads start screaming. Me too. They go to kick Just... the door down. Just like screaming, or are they saying something in the language? No, they're or... screaming. It's like the mermaids from Harry Potter. You gotta put it underwater. The egg. <laughs> can uh, can Vigo make an investigation check on the statues to see if there's anything aside from them screaming that is peculiar about them? After Falda puts her foot back down and kind of steps back, they stop screaming. Right. But yes, you can enroll to investigate. I roll to investigate. Can I also roll to investigate because I'm right here? Do you want to assist or do your own roll? I will assist. I, I suggest you do your own roll because. Okay, be I'll do my own <laughs> roll then. <laughs> okay. I have a positive invest, uh, investigation modifier. Yes, yes, do that. Okay. Three! Big three! <laughs> so. Fulmer just notices that they're just these bronze statues with open mouths, and why are why do they scream? Yeah, they're be beautifully constructed, but why do they scream? Um, I'm about Vito halfway notices to some... putting the door down again. Vito notices some uh, residue within their mouths, but you're not able to discern what it is. It's it's been a long time since anyone's been around this area. Um, but there's like a residue in each one, but it's it's different. One um, one kind of almost has like a, a dirt feel while the other one has more of a flaky feel. So the one in the deer's mouth is the dirt feel flaky in the other. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Uh, so one has a dirt feel, one has a flaky feel. But you're not able to discern what the residue is. It's just by feel, this is what you're feeling. Okay. Um, Vigo turns towards the rest of the party and says, um, Do any of you have a head for substances, uh, uh, things of an alchemical nature, reagents? Can I take a look at the substance and see if I recognize it as similar to anything I might have found in the woods and such before? Yes. Roll a nature check. Okay. And drink in this, so it could go well, it could go other way. We'll see. Fourteen. So the flaky one, you kind of you like whatever what little bit you're able to kind of like get in your hand to kind of take a look at. It looks kind of like rust but it's not rust because if you rub against iron iron's what rusts but it says bronze so what would have the same rusty kind of look with once dried um so that kind of rusty color it smells like iron um Oh, this is something Falna should know. I, Persephone, have no idea. And the uh, the other substance, I have no idea what it is. Um, it kind of reminds you of what happens when you, uh, like when when you let compost turn to dirt and let that dry. Mm. 
because mm -hmm. when you compost something and it rots away, it kind of turns into dirt or, or fertilizer and you're able to use that with plants. But when it completely dries out, it's just crumbly like dirt. Um, I have an idea. I'm not sure if it's a good idea, but we'll see where this gets us. Um, Vigo uh, pulls out one of his javelins. He breaks off the iron head of, of that javelin. And then he reaches into his uh, backpack to pull out a ration, to, to pull out like like a piece of like dried fruit or something like that. And explains, these places have not been touched in a while. More than likely, this is residue from things that have long deteriorated. Rust, iron, compost, something organic. Maybe those are what go in the mouths. Where do you, do you actually put them in the mouths? And if so, which one do you put in the mouth? If the party doesn't stop me, yes, I do. And I put the, the yeah. javelin... Hmm? No, I was saying, yeah, I'm, go I'm for it. I'm not going to stop, yeah. Okay. This was out of blast radius, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could, like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I'm way forward, but... Oh, but... You're in the back of the line, that's why I was just... Like, I was like, like we're yeah. keep Ponga, like, Ponga lining yeah. our way up. <laughs> yeah. I'm, fo I'm still in position to kick down the door if this doesn't work. Yeah. So okay, um, then that's what we do. I put the um, the javelin head, the iron spear tip, into the one that had a uh, that Willow pointed out was like like rustish. Mm -hmm. The wolf. The wolf. Yeah, the wolf. And then I put the um, ration. The, the dried ration. fruit. Actually, I put the dried fruit into the the deer's mouth. But I think about that for a second. Before before I put this, the javelin head into the wolf, like, like the, the the tang of the rust, like gives Vigo an idea as it hits his nose, and so he takes the javelin head, he grasps it tight in his hand, and he pulls it to, to cut his hand and leave blood on it. Iron. And then he puts that in. The deer does not scream, but the wolf does. The wolf does. Yes. You're close with the iron aspect with the blood. I, I will give you that hint. But obviously it's still screaming, so it's wrong. I do not like this wolf. Yeah, I don't like it either. Can I kick the door mm. in now? <laughs> Did you not try that already? <laughs> eh, I feel like... I got my leg up, th at least from my interpretation of what Christine said, I got my leg up and then the door started screaming. I didn't actually get to, like, Your make an athletic check. touched the door. Okay. And it was like, no. Well, maybe I want to try with my base then. <sighs> okay, so we know that the fruit worked in the deer. The wolf, we gotta figure out what goes in the wolf. Something with something, iron. Something with iron. That's and blood. Right. Something with iron and blood. Thing is, I guess maybe the weapon is actually not technically good enough because it would be made of steel. It would be made of an iron alloy. It wouldn't be made of pure iron. Hmm. So Do you want to try and investigate further? Does anyone else want to try and investigate the door? Yeah, I step away from it. So whoever okay. else wants to knock yourself out. Yilda literally just like walked on ahead. Y'all took for fucking ever. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Yilda's the person who continues the main storyline in a game. Everyone else is the one who does the side quests. <laughs> does the side quests. <laughs> um, are we not playing side quests right now? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like... What y'all don't know is that this whole game is a side quest of the campaign. Ooh. I would love to play in a campaign with y'all. Okay, it would so just yes. be scheduling hell. Uh, so yeah, fuck the um, door, let's go. Y'all been here for like an hour, we ain't getting nowhere, let's go. It's been like three minutes. Listen, in dwarf time, that's an hour. 
<laughs> no, it's not. In dwarf time, like an hour. Else. In Yilda time, maybe that's an it's, hour. Yeah, exactly. Listen, who's the who's the dwarf here? Me or the seven foot tree? Okay, I am a part <laughs> of a clan. Thank you very much. Wait, question: Did did Vigo? Was it just once the blood was shown, or once because Vigo didn't put the blood in the mouth of the wolf, right? Well, the no, blood it's, it's, it's the blade which he put in, and yes. the blade being put in is what caused the wolf to scream. But the dried fruit being put in the deer's mouth did not oh. like the deer's mouth is like the deer is not screaming, but the wolf is. Oh well, then with uh, with the wound still still gushing, Vigo will take um, the the javelin tip out of the thing and just like hold his hand over the wolf's maw and squeeze to to drip blood into its mouth. It still shrieks. Mm, so that's not it either. Mm. Okay. I. Uh, what if you just put your whole hand in there? <laughs> I am and, not and doing that. Get, get it bitten off? I mean, yeah, I can heal you. It'll be fine, probably. It'll be fine. Everyone yes. stares at the cleric who didn't heal the whole party. I have seen Look, enough you sailors took the with missing limbs to know I don't me. want to join them. Just giving shit. I'm just playing. I'm playing. Okay. Um, Iron of some kind works. It's just. Yeah. At this point, I'm in agreement with Yilda of if we explore more, we may find a clue somewhere else that will help us. So you're just going to abandon this door, what may lie behind it, and just keep going. Yes. You said a follow-up would be an investigation, right? I said if someone else wants to try and investigate the the, the door, the... Um, yeah. um... Yo, do you've got an intelligence score, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I want to keep going. <laughs> That's fair. Darn. Yeah, she's just not really actually that interested in this either. So close. At this so point, close. my right ear hurts because the damn thing keeps screaming and y'all just take forever because you, you, you just keep poking the damn thing. Let's just go. That's what my intelligence score is telling me. So y'all walk um, away from it. You don't try to shove anything else in the mouth. <laughs> Hiska wants to look in this other room here. Okay. Uh, just look. Not, like, anything special. Okay. Uh, would that be, uh, investigation or perception? Um, what's your, what kind of vision do you have? Uh, regular? Low yeah, I don't, like, if you mean, like, I don't have dark vision, no. Okay. Are you carrying a light source? Um, oh, uh, my magic item is the Goggles of Night, which I forgot to mention that. So that okay. gives me dark vision. Okay. So with those, you're able to see that there's just, there's some, like, stone on the ground that fell from the, the, the ceiling or the walls uh, from mm -hmm. the age of time. And then there's just a body in the corner. Oh, like a, like a, a skeleton or like a fresher body? Um, not Hook completely it with a stick. skeletonized. <laughs> so there's still some, some flesh on the body, but it doesn't look like it's going to get up and move anytime soon. I want to check it out. I want to see. Maybe there's something on that body that can go for it. Uh, liberate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, that's not good. <laughs> you find four copper pieces, and they were like literally just sitting next to him. Right. <laughs> like they had fallen out of his coin purse. You're like, ooh, shiny. Okay, sure, yeah. Would I be able to, to check to see what might have caused this thing to pass away? Is there any way of doing that? Ah. Would be something like medicine check? Yeah, that would be medicine. 22. 
Good lord. Wow. I, I'm proficient in medicine, that's why I asked. Um, so with what flesh is left, you... It is humanoid of some form, but enough flesh has been kind of eaten off or rotted away that it's hard to tell exactly um, where they hail from, but uh, you see scratches like from claw marks uh, across uh, chest and arms. Um, so you're able to figure out that he was able to get away and hid here in the corner, but wasn't able to get back to the entrance and died there from his wounds. Poor dear. Well, um, that sucks. Well, he, yeah, he definitely ran into something. We'll adjust these molder to try and make a little mound just to cover it up. Just try and do a little mini burial <coughs> for it, and then just keep charging ahead to see what else is up ahead. Okay, so y'all just keep going? Yep. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Keep on moving. I'm gonna go up this one. So, yeah, you guys just follow along and, oh, this path just kind of is a square. Um, just a square of hallways. And throughout all this, Willow's just gonna pull out from one of her other pockets a little pet scorpion that she's kept <laughs> in there throughout all of this. Okay. Okay. Just, just in case. She she feels a little sad about it, so she, it's, it's her comfort animal. So you enter this room and you see two humanoid statues uh, standing there in each one in a different pose. Uh, and then to your left are three levers. And there's also okay. some metal on the ground. Do you investigate these or keep going? Yeah. You just see uh, Yilda from the, the far corner just go, pull the levers! And she just walks towards the door. <laughs> <laughs> pull the lever! <laughs> Wrong lever! Wrong lever! And so... you all fall down a hole and die. Kiska no. wants to pull a lever also. <laughs> I will pull this lever. <laughs> All right, line up. Is line up here for pulling a lever. Um, hey, I'm gonna pull to this one. And Wait, can we... we not investigate to see what these things are before we pull the lever? You can. You I'm can sorry. Is that not what one. pulling the lever does? Yeah, pulling we're speed the running the investigation. <laughs> <laughs> we're speed running the. You know what? All right, fine. We're speed running the investigation. There we go. So y'all just pull levers. Yep. Yes, Willow was about Let, to say. I, I, um, I I'm not gonna pull it at the exact same time. Maybe you should. Um, that might probably work. Hmm. Meg as a player is just a little like devil, like an, uh, <laughs> angel and devil pair, just sitting next to you, being like, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Meg as a player is usually like, let's go. <laughs> so, y'all pull the levers, right? Yeah. Yes. All right, sure, why not? Nothing happens. Okay. Let's pull okay. one at a time. Okay. So who's going to pull first, then? I do. Okay. Then who? Uh, then Falna. Okay, and then Kiska. Nothing then happens. Kiska. Okay. Uh, okay, what about are, me, are there then any... Kiska, then you? Oh, okay. Do you want to investigate the levers, or just keep pulling them? I, I actually want to walk over and look at the statue. 
like okay. one of these statues. I guess I'll choose this one, like right here. I was gonna ask if I could just take investigate. a look around the room, not quite investigate, like close up each of the statues, but just see if anything around the room stands out. out okay. Around levers and such. Uh, perception for Willow to look around the room, um, just to kind of get a feel for it, and then, Damn. are you investigating the statue, yeah. Jessica? Yeah, like I wanna look at the statue up close just that okay investigation active okay. perception check would be 13 my passive is 18. <laughs> the statues so for to focus on willow first um the statues kind of look a little bit odd um these like the hands on some of them look like the fingers have been like bent in an odd way um like maybe it was holding something or they were bent in a way to like study study like hands and movement so like the the arms and the hands they're kind of like all bent in weird ways they're not entirely backwards are they no okay no they're not backwards they're just like the whole body is bent in weird ways so like necks are at angles hands are just kind of odd arms elbows shoulders um, head shoulders knees and toes with the limited light it's kind of hard to see why but uh kids go through the dust at least for some of the joints it seems like they're articulated Okay. Hmm. I mean, clearly they, like, these statues can definitely be, like, moved around, like, the limbs moved, and I don't know how that relates to the levers. Um... Is Anyone I... else want to investigate something further? Sure. What um, do you want to investigate? It, I, as far as these things go, are there any like obvious like symbols and things like that on them? Like iconography, glyphs, any sort of etchings that might discern it's... what no there's there's nothing on the walls there's really nothing on the levers um there's nothing on the statues it okay. kind of seems off and out of place and you're like what the heck are these things here for uh could i make a history check then to place what these things might be like what what created them Yes, since you've traveled around, you've been to many places, you've seen many kinds of statues, give me a history check. Sure. I am actually trained in that. 21! Okay, so from, from your travels, you recognize that these statues, while they may be featureless, are used a lot of the time to... Study like study the body um, in in its in its form like an artist would uh, instead of drawing a live subject would use one of these as its model for drawing. Mm. So that's why joints are articulated. That's why they look like they're in very weird poses. You surmise, I guess, that uh, previous adventurers have bent them into these weird shapes because <laughs> why not? You can move it. Why not? Yes. Um, yes. And the levers were at one point of use to move, to help move them, um, but are, if, as you found out from just playing with the levers, they don't work anymore. Yes. So at uh... one point, this was like an artist room and now just has two weird statues and levers sitting in it. Curious. Uh, Figo explains all this as we move towards the door, uh, stating that they are merely model mannequins. 
and uh. that whatever purpose they once served to people is long lost to history now. Interesting. Hmm. I would like to kick in this door. You really <laughs> want to kick a door. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Have door. you ever done it? So, this door has is pretty pretty well worn. You go to kick it, and you almost fall through it because it's really not latched. It's just there. Yep, meant to do that. Yeah, it's great. It's great. So you kind it's of like in the fall room. into like a lunge. <laughs> um, and when you come through the door, give me a perception check. Alrighty, perception. That's a thirteen. Okay. Not the worst. So. In this room, you see five stones. Uh huh. So you see five stones. Well, you see three. You kind of can't see the two on the other side. But yeah. you can kind of you can kind of see like over here that the the wall kind of turns more into darkness. So you can okay. surmise that there's a hallway here that leads to another back room. Right. Uh, but yeah, you see you see some stones on the ground and that hallway. What do you do? Uh, I would like to look around them and try and make, uh, investigate them and see if they're, like, connected to anything? Okay. Roll to investigate. Okay. 19! Much better than I thought it would be. So, it doesn't seem that they're actually... At least from what you can tell, it's, it doesn't seem like they're connected to anything that would harm you. Um, and there's no visible, like, connection lines between it and, like, a wall or something. But they do have a purpose here. Um, you're just not 100% sure what exactly uh, they connect to. Um, but you're able to surmise that this won't do harm. Okay, well, there's a bunch of rocks in here, uh, and I'm like 90% certain they're not trapped. Do you touch one? Uh, yeah, I'll touch this one. So, you... Oh, I guess I should... Oh, boy. I put them on the wrong layer. Oops. <laughs> the joys of being a DM. Wrong layer! <laughs> okay. So... Falna touches this one. Yes. Um, nothing seems to completely happen, but it feels like, like the stone kind of sinks a little but nothing happens like you touch and interact with that one but nothing seems to happen okay what um what is this here like kiska wants to is this a door or it looks like a wall to investigate that it 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 just looks like a wall Hmm. Um, could we do perhaps a nature check to tell what these stones are made of? I don't see why not. Unless, I mean, because they are, they're not, I know they look like stones, but considering uh, Fauna touched one and it did not behave like stone, 
it's right. clearly something else. So so Willow comes into the room. Willow, which do you interact with the same stone Falna does, or with a different one? Uh, I think just for the sake of time and also uh, just I think Willow's general personality, I think she'll go one at a time touching each stone. So she will eventually, uh, we'll say counterclock, we'll say clockwise, she'll go through each one. Okay, so you go around, they are, they are stones like pulled from nature. Um, but they they are there to do something, whether it's uh, like open a doorway or um, make something visible. You're not 100% sure which, but they were brought in. These natural stones were brought in from the outside for a specific purpose. Um, and as you walk around, you and Falna like talk about, uh, about that. Um, but you're still unsure exactly what they do. Should we each just try to touch one at the same exact time and see yeah. what happens? Sure. Come here, Stone. Okay. One, two, three. three. Anything happen? You all press the stones, and the door here opens. Oh, okay. Secret it door. was a wall, and it just kind of seems to sink. Sink in. And yeah. you let's, see a hallway. Let's go through the secret door. All right. Yeah, let's. Yeah. Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel through the mountain. Secret, 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 secret tunnel. You'll not just takes her warhammer and beats the fuck out of the door. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, that's at this thing. point, she's just like, how many fucking guts for sacred, stupid fucking turns have we got to fucking take? Like she's just done. Vigo stops, stops her for a second, only to then hand her the sledgehammer that he has. <laughs> With a, this will be more effective. <laughs> you barely touch it with the hammer. Like, you don't even get to do a full swing, and it just kind of disintegrates. The wood oh. was that rotten. Ooh. Oh, okay. Just gonna yeah, that, jump over uh, that, uh, and, uh... Cover... The and then it smells like ash. I thought ash. you were going to say oh, ass no. for a minute, and I was like, oh. Uh, yeah, okay, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Neither of those things are good. It's the reason why they are bad is what separates the two. <laughs> oh, that was great. <laughs> what do we see when we come in here in this large, massive, not at all looming, deadly room? Right. <laughs> All right, hold on one moment. Because I know I'm looking at the time and we're kind of getting close to end. <laughs> it smells like ash. Ash. <laughs> Thanks, Ulfrig. Ash. Oh, ash. Hey, Ulfrig. <laughs> okay, Ulfrig is not wrong. The ultimate party enemy is a CR30 door. It's, it is truly the enemy of everything you want to do in a dungeon. This is why Gygax may disintegrate, all right? <laughs> so, yeah, you, you break down that door, <laughs> and it disintegrates like it was rotten, but also burned. And as you swung the uh, hammer, 
Uh, Yelda? You noticed that where you were swinging, the door looked fine. But then the pieces that you see on the ground on the other side are what are burnt. All right, team, back out the other way. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> things burned from this side not the other way this is and crazy. as you keep walking down the hallway and mm -hmm. into the room you just see scorch marks on the stone and you see more once you enter into this room and standing in the middle of the room is hey crap where is its card <laughs> is it a chocobo can it be a chocobo Can we just hear its, its terrifying quee sounds as it enters <laughs> or... <laughs> you see okay now i got it a Gargantuan. Oh, I don't like that word. <laughs> Seemingly fire elemental, but it's kind of got these, uh, like molten lava, uh, like rib cage looking things and horns and eyes and a mouth and it's just standing there. <sighs> You hear crackling fire, it's breathing heavy, it looks angry. It looks like that. Oh, oh, Lee. Okay. Wow. That's a much better looking Balrog. It's, mm -hmm. it's tall, it's hangry. Finally. A worthy opponent. You want to call Steve? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think this is a time. I think this is a time. And because I know we're getting close to the end of it. Mm. Uh, I was going to say, and as you prepare for a battle, renewed vigor, calling Steve the water elemental, <laughs> like uh, maybe elemental. deciding to, to give a, a, a loud shout for Riffin to come help. Y'all dive into battle with the aspect of fire. Yes. And we will end with y'all raging into battle. It's just a snapshot of everyone just slowly building stuff. Right! He's like, haha, I am ready! Kiss is summoning ice magic in a hand. Yes! He's ready to Something. fight. Yilda's ready to fight. And... It like, pans from that, and, and then as like, like the camera were to pan out, it's just y'all like, battle faces charging in, uh, ready to go to town to fight a... Aspect of fire. Big thing made of fire. Yep. You see the, la the uh, one in the far back, Willow riding a water fire. into battle. <laughs> fire cannot harm a blacksmith. So, Yay. we are going to end. They're going to charge into battle, and I'll I'm going to leave it as the cliffhanger. Do they win? Do they lose? Hmm? Of course we win. Course yes. We win. We're the good guys. Title and they get scorched! <laughs> <Debatable>. oh, <laughs> y'all y'all are pretty singed. Ow. <laughs> I got fire resistance, it's fine. I'm ready. <laughs> I've also fine. got fire resistance. Awesome. We got this. Yay. Cool. Yeah, you guys take point. <laughs> Kiska and I are just in the back, just like I'm commanding an elemental and you're just chucking things across that. Right. I, I have a spell that has like a 300 foot range, so I'm just gonna by the door here. Yes. To wrap this one shot up of the Ferna Ruins, the party charges. 
mostly fearlessly into battle. Um, when you come across a gargantuan fire elemental, you're kind of taken aback. Uh, but after defeating that, and then with your newfound friend, Riffin, you relay back your information and head back to town to relay that to them. And though it wasn't asked of you, you are thanked and highly appreciated for, for what you did. And y'all regale tales of what you found in there. And thank y'all for joining us. Thank you. Uh, we did have a raid earlier, so thank y'all for uh, raiding. Um, again, we have a wonderful uh, Discord, so please come join us and check out our Patreon. Patreon, I can't speak. It's been a long night. Um, and check out our merch on uh, So Nerdware. Um, we are wrapping up our first season, but sign ups for side quest season two are starting. So come join us on the Discord if you're interested in one shots. We've got a lot of cool things going to be starting for the new year. Um, everyone just remind where you can be found on the internet and we'll say our goodbye. Don. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Uh, once again, I am Don, uh, sometimes known as Jago. Um, you will be able to find me on the Welcome to the Party Discord. I don't have a Twitter or anything like that. Uh, next season, however, I will be guest starring in Blood and Shackles starting in January. So come check that out on Friday evenings for some high fantasy pirate adventures. Super stoked for that. Um, if you can't get enough of my voice for whatever reason, um, there is also a, a podcast that I do with two of my friends. Uh, we are Drinking With Nerds, and you can find us on Podbean and iTunes. And Spotify, I think. If that's the case, they, that's new. They don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> they don't tell you anything. No, I just come and say the things. They, they handle the rest of it. Persephone. Uh, hi, I'm at Persephone Hime on Twitter, uh, and I'm also in the Welcome to the Party Discord. Woo! Woo! Phoenix. Hello there, everybody. Um, you can find me somewhere around the Discord at times. Haven't been as active as I used to be, but I'll probably be joining a little more in conversations. Uh, and also on Twitter at Phoenix Twenty Four Fem, where I generally just share a lot of. POC focused TTRPG stuff and occasionally just send messages and comments of like, you're a really great person and I like you or you're awesome because I just spread joy wherever I go because I'm support class as a person throughout all True. of my life. True. But yeah, that's me. And also my Patreon at Philosophem where writing has been slowed because of new job and getting adjusted to new things, but I'll probably be adding a few more things before the year is out. So that's me. Uh, Lily? Hello, I am Lily. I'm at Elise on Life on Twitter. And um, I am a cast member on uh, Misfits of Space, which is a Star Wars actual play podcast. Uh, I am here at Welcome Party RPG. I'll definitely be in some side quest season two. Um, and uh, possibly probably on 3v which is a, another um uh one shot uh that happens on sundays um and uh probably possibly also showing up on i have some things in the works i may be on some other podcasts or streams uh coming up in the new year i tweet about stuff so elise on life is where you can pretty much find out anything that I will talk about um, I'm taking part in. And I am the scribe on Twitch and Discord. Meg. Hello, I am Meg or Megan. I am usually just wandering through the Discord yelling about things. Um, you can find me 
Um, on our Blood and Shackles that Don previously mentioned, I am cast on there, so all the fun sword fights. I'm a kick-ass 18-year-old child, which, I mean, personality. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm probably going to be wandering through side quests again, and hopefully hopping on 3v whenever my student teaching tries to not kill me next semester, so. All right. Thank y'all. To wrap it all up, uh, I am Christine, aka Crafty Psych, on the Twitterverse. You can come find me on our Discord, and I'm, I'll be here. Come find us. Come have fun. And we are going to go raid Culture Nerd TV. Thank y'all for joining us and watching and interacting. It was a lot of fun. Thank y'all. Love you. Good night. Good night. One moment, everybody. I gotta find somebody else. Can't rate that channel. Oh, no. So we will be... Instead, rating uh, Mercs of Mischief. All right. Let's go raid. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Mercs of Mischief. All right, that's where we're going to go raid. Oh, and then I type it wrong. Outro one of us has ever had to try and read another channel. <laughs> there we go. It helped right. if I could type. Yeah, it, it's cool. <laughs> I had that problem as well. Are we out? And there we go. Yay. All right.